But Mississippi River water still impacting South Mississippi. One of the researchers testifying about this before the Corps of Engineers and the Mississippi River Commission, by the way, Institute for Marine Mammal Studies Executive Director, Dr. Moby Solange. Good to see you, Moby. And we've been talking about this for weeks on this show and on our WLOX newscast. You've been our guests on this. And the biggest story, I think, from the federal level down to the local level is Mississippi needs to be at that table involved in some of this decision making, correct? That's absolutely correct. Um, I think even though that the Bonnie Carey spillway has closed, uh, the effects are going to continue for many weeks or months because the Lake Pontchartrain is filled with that water and it's going to drain through that narrow Wrigley's passageway for weeks and months and so we're going to still see its effect. As you know, there's still a swimming advisory. There's still algal blooms from Bay St. Louis to Pascagoula. But you have not seen dead dolphins or sea turtles in quite a while, though. Well, but had, that initially, in the early stages of this event, was a big story. But you have not seen that evidence recently, though. It has slowed down. That's yeah. correct. Uh, now, you've worked and done uh, necropsies on these animals. Can you make a direct correlation between the opening of the Bonnie Carey Spillway and the deaths of these uh, dolphins and sea turtles yet? Or yes. is the data still uh, inc inconclusive? Well, we are still doing the pathologies and toxicologies, but majority of the animals in Mississippi had freshwater lesions, which are directly associated with uh, water salinities gone down due to the Bonnie Carey spillway. There are f certainly there are other rivers that were I impacting, but the bulk of the water coming in from the Mississippi River is probably going to be the cause of this. Yeah, and it's just been heartbreaking when people have seen images like these uh, dead dolphins, beautiful uh, creatures, and the dead sea turtles as well. It's just something that has really struck a chord here in South Mississippi. Do you get a feeling like uh, that the River Commission and the Corps of Engineers and officials in Louisiana are getting the message and they're going to be receptive to what Mississippi is asking for? I think uh, all of them are very surprised, at least uh, they engaged with me in a conversation uh, during my testimony that uh, that was going to have that great an effect on Mississippi. And I think one of the reasons they have never included Mississippi in the discussions, they felt that this was just a local issue. But one of the things that I pointed out to the commission was that uh, even now that the Bonnie Carey Spillway has been closed, what we are seeing from Mid-Britain Sound and all these other diversions that are existing and planned are going to be even worse than the Bonnie Carey Spillway. And we need to really pay attention to that. Do you believe as a scientist that these diversions are even necessary, that maybe uh, man, that it's just going to create more man-made problems, that there's no way that we can really beat the Mississippi River and that the natural course of the river should just be allowed to happen on its own? I think you really hit a point. Man has been changing the natural course of this river and by keep doing levees, dams, diversions, spillways. And every time man solves one problem, it creates two more. Uh, let's look at it from a layman's perspective. The Mississippi water, the river uh, watershed is a basin, is a bathtub. And the Mississippi River going through Louisiana combines all that water from those 30 states and two provinces through one river. What that river is clogged, the drain is clogged. What used to be maybe 100 feet deep is now maybe 50 feet deep. I'm just giving you an example. Mm -hmm. So there's less water passing through that drain, and the excess water causes flooding. But what we have done is, instead of dredging and making that river deeper so it will all flush out, we poke holes in the drain, which are diversions and spillways, and that diverts water. And I think the strategy of creating land by these diversions, I think, is flawed. Yeah in 2019. It, it happened naturally h hundreds of years ago, though. Uh, and we also say a freshwater intrusion, as we've been talking about this, only because technically we want to distinguish between that and salt water. But the fact is, it is anything but fresh. It's polluted. We're talking about 31 states, uh, two provinces in Canada. We're talking about farming and pesticides, industrialization, 
So it's sewage. essentially sewage. It's essentially pollution mm -hmm. that's pouring into Lake Pontchartrain in the Mississippi Sound, not fresh water from the Mississippi River. I think that's an excellent point. A lot of people then say, oh, you've got the Pearl River, the Pascagoula, the Biloxi. These are natural rivers that for thousands of years created the Mississippi Sound and has, have been balanced. But when you pour in the Mississippi River water into the Mississippi Sound, which is not connected to the Mississippi River, a lot of people don't know that. Not naturally. Not naturally. Yeah. You bring in all these pollutants in, including fresh water, including the mud and clay, and all of that is retained and, and really disrupts the ecosystem. How, a lot has been talked about the Morganza spillway north of Bonnie Carey, up more around Baton Rouge area, and a lot of people have said you open that, divert the water, water more to the west into the Atchafalaya Basin, Morgan City, other areas like that, and that it would that, in your mind, help alleviate a little bit of the problem if they maybe released more water to the west and less towards our own Mississippi Sound? I think uh, that is probably a strategy that can be used. We are using the 1920s and 30s strategies to manage these rivers. Things have changed. Uh, we don't have the same amount of sediment that used to be in the water 200 years ago. Uh, we are also uh, protecting those areas that were supposed to be flood, flood uh, prone and developing those. So that's one of the reasons they don't open up the Morganza because it'll cause more damage to Louisiana it's easier to divert it towards Mississippi. Well, that kind of takes me to my next question. I know you're a scientist and you don't want to get dragged kicking and screaming into the politics of it, but uh, there are a lot of uh, influential Louisianans who would, ha who would stand to lose if the Morganza spillway were to be opened. There are expensive, extravagant fish camps and some of the crawfish farms and things like that. So how much politics is being played into this, would you say? Absolutely. It's all political. Uh, and again, it's going to take congressional action. It's going to take involvement of uh, Mississippi uh, legislature and politicians to defend our resources. We have tourism that's being affected. Our marine resources are being affected. And our way of life is being affected. And so as they keep on changing the river, adding diversions, adding spillways, this is not going to stop. It's only going to get worse. All righty. From IMMS, Dr. Moby Solange, always appreciate your insight into this, Moby, because I know you're, uh, you've got your fingers kind of on the pulse of what's happening over here with this. And, and thanks for coming and being with us this morning.